Uh, and one of the great things about being involved with these uh, conferences is I get to meet all kinds of interesting and uh, prominent people. One of the most prominent is Bill Gray, who is a legend in weatherology or whatever you guys call it. He is the uh, he is the <laughs> he is the hurricane centers uh, guru and uh, has been uh, doing hurricane predictions and research and uh, but he's more than that and uh, in fact he was the first guy to explain to me what the Pacific decadal oscillation is all about. Um, so Bill is going to be on first. Uh, Anthony Lupo is sitting right next to Bill and Anthony is a uh, climate expert from the University of Missouri, a fine place, and he's going to talk about blocking uh, or maybe something else. And uh, the third guy on the panel is Stan Goldenberg, who is um, a character, at least. Stan is, Stan's had 11 kids. He told me that today. Uh, he goes up in planes and flies around in uh, hurricanes uh, to get a sense of what it's like and he is with the Hurricane Research Center of Miami. So Stan Goldenberg will be on third. Bill, you ready? Well, thank you very much. Thanks a lot, John. I'm glad to be here. This is my uh, six of the seven uh, conferences. I think uh, the world is a much better place because the Heartland Institute is here and functioning. <laughs> Somebody's got to stand up to all this foolishness on global warming and human uh, cause this and that. And uh, I've been around a long time. I first, I was a, I in a graduate student and wrote my first paper related to weather in 1952. What's this year? How many? Did, I've been around a long time. I'm an old guy. But I'm very lucky for an old guy because I have something I believe in and want to keep working, and I'm dedicating the rest of my life to fighting this thing. How did, uh, let's see, how did we get... Yeah, okay, so the subject of this panel is have increases in CO2 led to more severe weather and severe climate events? The general answer is no, <laughs> absolutely not. And of course, there may be something there in the CO2 that's making the weather a little bit different, but it's that much different and we'll never know what it is. It's buried in the noise level of the global circulation, and we'll never know for a hundred years or more to isolate what this CO2 is. Now, I've got a, a graph here. Now, don't get scared. These are watts per square meter unit, and I just want you to look the solar on the left. We have, this is a global average annual. We have 342 of these units coming in every day. We have albedo goes out, reflected scattered radiation to space. We have long wave radiation on the right and brown going out every day. And at the surface, you see, uh, of the solar energy coming in, about half of it gets to the surface. And of that surface, about half of it is balanced by evaporation. It takes so much energy to evaporate, change water from liquid to vapor and half of the incoming solar, average around the globe all year, goes to that. The other half goes, the, the Earth warms a little bit, and you have the balance is IR loss or long wave radiation to space and sensible heat. If the land warms a little bit more than the air, it gives heat off to the air. Now, what is CO2 done 
in the last uh, 150 years since the Industrial Revolution started. It's 1.4 units. These are daily units. This has taken 150 years to build up 1.4. Now you tell me how that 1.4 is making tornadoes greater, hurricanes greater, and all the other severe weather, extra floods, droughts, whatever you have. I can, I've been around 60 years. I've worked hard. I've thought long and hard on this. I've given classes. I can't understand how that would work, and nobody else can. So the answer is, is CO2. Perhaps it's doing a minute amount, but we don't know what it is because we had lots of tornado breakouts last year because uh, this last winter was warm. Doesn't mean a damn thing. The humans aren't doing it. This, it's the most ridiculous thing, and if you see this. Now, at the, a doubling of CO2 towards the end of this uh, century, they say, will block long-wave radiation to space about 3.7 watts per square meter. <laughs> Now, if we assume that energy gets down to the surface and it's distributed the way energy is now, half of it would go into energy for evaporation, which uh, would mean we would have about 1.8 units uh, going into evaporation of the 3.7, and the other roughly half uh, would go into IR loss and to sensible heat flux. Now, to get these fluxes up, you, the globe will have to warm about 0.3 degrees C. Not 3 degrees, as all the models said, roughly, but 0.3, about a tenth as, as much. And the globe will have to increase the hydrologic cycle by a, a little over 2%. That's what will do it. That's what I think is going to happen near the end of the 21st century. Now, what do the global models say? They say, okay, they take the 3.7 and units of blocked IR loss to space and say that's going to warm the atmosphere. And if you figure out the, uh, uh, how much the atmosphere's got to warm to send the same amount of energy back to space, it's got to warm about 1 degree C, 1.1 or 1. And then what the models do, they say this warming, they say that the globe will uh, keep the relative humidity constant. So if you warm the air a little bit, it can hold more moisture. So they put more moisture in, and it's that extra moisture that blocks two or three or four times more radiation to space than the original CO2 by itself. So this blockage, they say, the feedback, the positive feedback, and here's where it's all wrong. It's two degrees. So they add those two, and they say all the models, you know, they, some give two and a half, some three and a half, and various, they jump around. The average is about three. Now, they're wrong with the one degree. If you block the CO2, double it to space, half that energy is going to go into evaporation. So if it is, then you're only going to have to block half or balance half the 3.7, so the globe should warm about half a degree with a doubling of CO2. Now, a lot of our work says this positive water vapor feedback is not positive, it's slightly negative. So my best estimate is the feedback is about minus 0.2, and the type of warming we'll see when we double CO2 is going to be about 0.3, not 3 degrees, roughly a tenth or so. 
This is not going to cause any problems to the world of slightly more warming. Now, if it went up three degrees, yes, I would be worried. Uh, the crops, a lot of things would change. That would, if they're right. But the problem with this CO2 is the physics is wrong. It's terrible. The more you're in the field, more of my older colleagues, they're the ones who see the problems if you thought long and hard on it. So uh, now I get into my real talk and I got five minutes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> now, the physical flaws in the global warming theory are much worse than anybody realizes just about. Maybe me and a few others realize how really bad it is because we've studied it and thought about it so damn long. Now, would that help me? I have absolutely no federal money. I've been cut off of everything. I have a young colleague who's helping me make the forecast. Actually, he's a leader in a hurricane forecast. I'm in the, my 29th year doing that. He's in his 12th year associated with me. We've been cut off of all funding. Can't get any funding, any at all. It's just, if you're persona non grata, and you, one of the things that bothered me is there hasn't been a dialogue. You see, if this was an important problem, if CO2 you know, comes up, okay, maybe it's an important problem. And so, okay, so the government should take money and fund those that believe in it. If uh, people run models and have it, okay, let them run it. But they should also give money to people like me who see great flaws in the problem, and they don't do that. So I'm looking for any private money. By the way, the government money, there's so much of it. It's so it came out with this recent uh, Heartland problem of the uh, hacking into their system. Um, the amount of money the Heartland has and what the government has is so different. There's no private money and the government money is more tainted than anything the private sector would give. They say they wanted to find, I think, with the Heartland, whether the uh, Koch brothers or the energy companies were funding them. They weren't much. But uh, why should that money be tainted any more than the government money? The government money, you can only get it if you believe in warming. If you have a different point of view, you're not going to get funding. This is an idea where politics descended into science, and it's lousy. Now, uh, here I was going to read this long thing here. Uh, you know, it, 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 it's just terrible that people with all these processes going back, I'm cutting my talk down, with all these processes going on, air, uh, evaporation, long, short wave, all these things going on, why would you think all these tremendous energy fluxes of the climate system, why would they all remain constant for a long period, and only this little bit of CO came in and drove the whole damn thing. It's crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy to think this way, and they won't argue with us. You can't get arguments. You get isolated. I was brought up with all these older, warmer guys, I went to school with them. I'm persona non grata with most of them now and so on. But maybe I will read this. I'll read this and quit. The main misconception of the global warmers is to assume that all the many large energy terms of the climate system remain constant over long periods, and that the only changes that matter 
for climate alteration are the very small, minute variations of human-induced CO2. Does that seem logical? No. It's crazy to take this little thing and say it dominates over the whole thing when we have rainfall variations of uh, two or three percent that go on that dominate the energy that would support extra evaporation or less evaporation is more than anything the CO2. The albedo off the top of clouds, that hasn't been worked out. And the main thing I don't have time to show you, but we've done a lot of work, fund just to, uh, from my own private money to look at this energy budgets with the new data sets, and they show there's more energy to space when you get more rain. And there's, we not gonna see CO2 do anything. This will be found out. You can't hold truth back. We're going to see the discrediting of this in the next decade or two, I'm sure. And in 20 years, we're going to look back and say, how in the hell could America, <laughs> with all the great science, all the great intellects, be so swayed like it's been with the majority of people up to now, particularly the, in the year or two following Gore's film, believe so strongly in this. If ever there's a balloon, what are... Uh, Ready to burst, I think it's this one. Thank you.